We begin tonight with the Harvey Weinstein verdict, guilty of rape and criminal sexual assault, not guilty on three other counts. Tonight, he's been taken to New York's infamous Rikers Island, once one of the most powerful figures in Hollywood. Tonight, Weinstein is now behind bars. He faces up to 29 years in prison. The DA, Cy Vance, saying after the verdict of the women who testified, they inaugurated a, quote, new day for sex assault survivors. Tonight, Harvey Weinstein's lawyers vowing to appeal in ABC's Ariel Reshef leads us off outside that courtroom here in New York. He was once one of the most powerful movie producers in Hollywood, but tonight, Harvey Weinstein is a convicted sex offender, facing five to 29 years behind bars. This is the new landscape for survivors of sexual assault in America, I believe. Weinstein is a vicious, serial sexual predator who used his power to threaten, rape, assault, trick, humiliate, and silence his victims. The former movie mogul appearing stunned by the verdict as he was lifted out of his seat and taken to jail. He looked at me and he just said, I'm innocent. He's like, I'm innocent. He's like, you know, how, how could this happen in America? But the jury found Weinstein guilty of the third degree rape of Jessica Mann and guilty of sexually assaulting Mimi Halei in 2006. I tried to get away, but it was impossible. He was extremely persistent and physically overpowering. If you do to women what you did to Mimi, you shouldn't be surprised if you have to face criminal consequences for the crimes that you committed against them. Jurors acquitting Weinstein on two counts of predatory sexual assault with a possible life sentence. Let's turn to the day's other main story. Fears are growing that it won't be possible to stop the global spread of coronavirus. Uh, health experts have warned that the chances of containing it are diminishing as cases appear in more countries. Most infections are still in China, but there are a number of significant clusters elsewhere. Around 77,000 people have been infected in China, uh, where the virus emerged last year. There have been nearly 2,600 deaths. South Korea, which has the largest number of confirmed cases outside China, has more than 830 cases. Eight people have died so far. Iran says it has 61 cases of the virus and that 12 of those infected have died. And in Europe, Italy is the worst affected. More than 220 people have tested positive for coronavirus and there are six reported deaths. 11 towns have been put into quarantine to try to contain the virus. In a moment, we'll bring you the latest from our correspondents in China and in South Korea. But first, Mark Lowen reports from Italy, from the town of Codogno, which is southeast of Milan. Coronavirus is looking more and more like a global pandemic, spreading far beyond mainland China, where the government says strict quarantines have slowed infection rates locally. But even this has failed to stop the virus. In Italy, a few cases this weekend ballooned today to over 200. At least seven dead, train lines stopped. Nearly a dozen villages declared zone rosse, red zones. NBC's Molly Hunter is in Milan. The challenge for the Italians is stopping the spread before it spreads through Europe's open borders. And that starts here at train stations, airports and transportation hubs. In Iran, 12 dead so far, the government is racing to increase production of surgical masks. In South Korea, more than 800 now infected. In the most impacted area, a line for face masks went on and on.